There's a chat. Welcome to Tammy Talks, Grub, Gab, Growth. I am super excited that you're here today. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I was really excited to put together a place where people can come and learn about being resilient. And I, I know there's a lot of definitions out there, but for me, being resilient is really being able to not just bounce back through your challenges, but to bounce back stronger. So every week, every week on Tammy Talk, I'm looking forward to having different guests who have, you know, life experiences that might not be the same as yours, um, but they have skills that are transferable to whatever situation you're going through. So um, I want you to imagine, like back in the day, that you're sitting in a kitchen, maybe it was at your mom's house or your grandmother's house, or you are, you know, at a friend's house. But there was some magic that happened in the kitchen and particularly at that kitchen table. People would come from wherever they were and it would usually be sort of a ragtag group of people, some older, some young kids in there. Uh, but at the kitchen table, you started solving the world's problems through our lens, right? But more importantly, you started helping people solve their individual problems. So whether they were around relationships or it was around work or career or friends, um, there was always a place at the table to have that conversation. So I am excited every week to bring you those types of conversations and hopefully you'll feel like you're at the table. Um, but I, what, what I wanted to do today is talk to you about probably what is one of my obsessions when it comes to resilience, which is, which is what we can learn from sports as we develop our resilience muscle. Um, and in order to do that, I'm super excited to welcome a very good friend of mine, uh, 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 Billy Taylor. You there, Billy? Yes, I'm here. All right. So for can those who don't know, I can hear you. Um, for those who don't know, Billy is a former New York Giant and NFL player for a couple of teams. I think what he's most proud of is that he's a corporate trainer um teaching everything from being of service you know great customer service to communication skills uh he's a radio talk show host and i'll let him tell you about that and he's very involved in big brothers big sisters and athletes helping athletes um billy it's so i'm so glad we've stayed connected for all these years and i want to welcome you to tammy talks i am so impressed with you and I, I thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. And I love your subject matter, resilience, because that's part of life. It, its general message is you you can never give up. Yeah, it is, that is the general message. And I think getting to that point of never giving up is sort of the tools that we're, that we're looking to dissect. So, you know, I think a lot of people, and Bill, you know people like, oh, you just, you know, you dust yourself off and you keep going. But for some people, it's just not that simple. Um, so you've been an athlete your entire life, needless to say, I've been an athlete and I think there's a lot to learn about resilience from either playing sports or watching sports. And, um, let me give you like my thought and then I want to get your reaction. So I think regardless of the sport, athletes face a wide range of physiological, emotional, and physical stressors that impact their performance. Um, and these, when we talk about stresses, we could talk about injuries, which we've seen lately in the NFL. We could talk about performance slumps, which, you know, I don't know anything about that because I've never had a slump. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, conflicts with the coach or your team, career transitions. I know you've experienced a lot of this. And, and by the way, the pressure to perform no matter what's going on in your life. 
So what are your general thoughts about um, athletes and this concept of resilience? Do you feel like all athletes have this as part of their DNA or is it a muscle that athletes have to build also? I think athletes have to build it also, but I've really noticed the difference between people who are non-athletes and athletes because, uh, you know, I do that thing that you mentioned, athletes helping athletes. And what happens is that if a kid is trying out for soccer, lacrosse, or a sport, and he doesn't do good, he doesn't do good right away, they, they quit. Uh, and I see that around the country that a lot of people, uh, when they're not successful, they quit. But what you're supposed to do is fight your way through it and try to figure out another way to do it. See, uh, like myself, I know, uh, you know, I grew up in Texas, but when I first came, came to Texas, um, I was third string and I was kind of mad at that. And I went like five or six games and never played in the game. And I went and talked to my dad about it. And he said, Billy, don't ever quit because you will get in the habit of quitting. And so that's probably what resilience is, is being able to hang in there. And I hung in there until the last game of the season, the guy who played in front of me at running back, he got hurt. And then I went in and played my first high school game, do anything, but I was just happy to be there. And that inspired me to work even harder to be resilient, to take the position going into the next season. So do you think it's good enough to, and I know like probably you and I grew up in like a different era, right? Where people were just, they weren't as sympathetic. Like you're hurt either, you know, get back in the game or go sit on the side. You had a bad game, like shake it off. There wasn't like a whole lot of conversation around like what shake it off looks like. Um, Go ahead. Well, what I like is that they have professional people in, in charge now who don't make the decision what they used to make. When I even played for the Giants, uh, the guy said, Billy, are you okay? All you had to do was answer him, yes, and then he'd send you back on the field. And most athletes, you know, they always want to get back on the field. So that's part of a resilience. But, but then also you can, get, um, you can get hurt worse by not listening to the people who are professionals and there's a difference between being injured and being hurt. And you got to recognize that because one, you can have resilience on and come back. The other one, we can hurt yourself worse. I know, but I think part of the problem, Billy, like fundamentally is, I don't think that's real resilience when an athlete gets back on the field. Well, it is resilience in some ways, but they're also being motivated by a check. Right. So somebody, you know, you get bonuses based on playing time and touchdowns and blocks and this and that. So is that real resilience or is that like your wallet talking? Well, like see, I got to get up and go play. Yeah. But say that you're in a situation where it gets really tough and you're on the you're trying to decide, should I hang in there or should I try and wait for another day? If you have anything inside you and you're not hurt, I think you'll see sit there and try to fight your way back. If someone's beating you in, in any, any, whether it's a, you know, a spelling bee or, or playing basketball, you want to be able to make sure that you are, are prepared. And I think, you know, you've heard the adage that, uh, you know, you prepare, prepare for something. It gives you an advantage when you go in. And that's what I look at resiliency too, is part of being prepared to do whatever task is asked. And if you do, have a downfall or become a mistake or things don't go right, you'll, you'll figure out a way to get it done. I think resiliency is figuring out a way to, a way to get it done when people think there's no way to get it done. Mm-hmm. So that's a good point. And I think, um, so there's some, like some really great tools I've, and you touched on it before and I'm going to get back to that in a second, but there's some really great tools that you can develop as an athlete that I think people that, do not play sports, nor do they watch sports, have a more difficult time developing some of these skills. For example, um, listen, being an athlete, and you can attest to this, you need to have an optimistic mindset all the time, right? Even when you're losing, even maybe you're on the sideline, you're not even in the game. Um, How do you think developing an optimistic mindset, first of all, can help little kids that are just starting to play sports? Um, I think I think one of the things is how in anything you do, and like my mom and dad were teachers, but they say anything you do, if you want to get better, you can. If you're not doing as well in math, what do you do about it? If you're not doing well in certain things in school and you don't play sports, how do you 
learn the aspect of never giving up. And I think the way you do it is by, by practicing perfect because, you know, it's the old adage about how do you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice. And I think anybody who gives an effort on something, they, they will at least have a little bit of resilience because if it's a desire in your heart to do something, you should never quit. But the thing is, I said before is that too many young kids try something for the first time, whether it was a new math class or a new sport, and they're not successful, they quit. They have a lack of resiliency. And I think that what we have to do as, as, as mentors is get people to realize that everybody makes a mistake. It's just a matter of what do you do about it? And that you were talking about winning and losing before, I think, and I hate to admit it because I hate to lose, but you learn more by losing than winning. And that's the hard part because nobody wins all the time, whether it's LeBron James or, or anybody, Michelle uh, Obama. Everybody has to be able to figure out what to do when things are not the way they should be. And every there's nothing that goes perfect. So that's the way you become a better, better person is by when things happen like this, you get better at it, you understand it better, and it, it even increases the resiliency that you have as you go through life. Yeah, I have a really like, listen, I let's talk about what's going on nowadays, right? The kids are, let's say you're going out to play Little League Baseball, right? You're five years old. It's your first time out. It's probably T-ball. Maybe your parents have helped you. The Maybe they the haven't. But you end up, um, you end up on the bench. And the parents, I'm talking about today's parents, they get upset because their kid's not in the game. And you're being, as a little kid, it's like, you know, parents who've played sports maybe say, you know what, if you don't want to ride the bench, you have to do what you have to do to get better. But there's a lot of parents out there that never played sports. And they immediately, like, the kid doesn't play. It looks like they're not going to be good. They tell them, like, yeah, you can quit. We'll go find something else. We'll go try something else. Like, I think this participation society that we live in where everybody gets a trophy just for showing up has seriously impacted kids' ability to develop resilience because there's always, like, something else you can do that you might succeed at. And I also think that parents are uh, getting too involved in the course of the referees and umpires when they need to keep their mouth closed because because, you know, the kid's going to figure it themselves. Not, they don't need the parent to yell at the umpire or yell at the coach because their, their kid is not doing what they should do. I think as long as the kid is involved in sports, and I encourage most parents to allow their kids to play sports, especially at a young age, because you learn to work together. You learn what it takes to work together. You learn what it takes to be a teammate. And you learn if something doesn't go right, you fight through adversity, make it stronger. And I think that's the key thing that I learned in sports is that there's always going to be adversity. How do you deal with it? Like, that's the bottom line for me. Yeah, I do think that's one of the most important takeaways for like our little kids. And, you know, I've, I have four kids. I encouraged all of them to play sports um, because there's a lot to learn. But let me ask you, we have a couple minutes before break. Like what now let's keep on this topic of the little kids, like the five, let's say the nine year olds, maybe. How about the kids that are not encouraged to play sports? Like they're Go ahead. I, like, how do we build resilience in those little kids that don't have sports? Well, I think you have to teach them that, that life is not always, you know, peanut butter and jelly. Life is a strings of, of up and downs. And sometimes things are going to go great. And I think that's why you have to, you know, teach people to kind of be able to understand things because when things don't go right, what do you do about it? I mean, do you want to, to fight somebody? Do you want to get upset and throw things? Or do you want to figure out a way to make it better? And I think the first thing I always do, and even my little son, when he was a five-year-old, I used to tell him, no matter what happens, if things go wrong, just just you know, be calm and think about what's going to happen in the future. What can you do to make it better? What can you do to change the situation? And those are all things that kids need to do. I really hate that is that when something happens and they get mad, they go on to something else because it gets you in the habit of quitting and you know you mm -hmm. ever you know think that this is a habit if things don't go right i'll quit i don't allow my uh my uh, uh teammates or friends or family members to to even think about the word quit i don't even like to use the word quit in my vocabulary because it's such a negative feeling i agree with everything you're saying 
I do also believe, and we're going to jump to break in just a second here. Let's pick this up when we come back, because I think we are raising kids in a society where maybe it's not the word quit, but trial and error is okay. Like I didn't do well at baseball, so I'm gonna go try lacrosse. Oh, I suck at lacrosse. Let me go try soccer, and then eventually they end up like playing the trombone, <laughs> or marbles, <laughs> or marbles, or jump rope. Um, anyway, okay. So listen, Billy, love the conversation. Hang in there. We're gonna take a really quick break, and then I want to come back and maybe talk more about what parents can do to help build resilient kids because resilient kids become resilient adults. So let's talk about that when we get back. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity and fame, Living your passion, feeling your life has purpose. Solivity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play, and doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. Hey, welcome back to Tammy Talks. I am so excited to have Billy Taylor as my special guest today. Um, Billy's a former New York giant. More importantly, he's a motivational speaker and an all-around great guy. Um, you still there, Billy? I'm still. I'm still. Can uh -oh. you hear me? Yeah, can I can hear you. Okay, sorry about um, that. Uh, I'm, I'm mute. That's okay. So I wanted to like take this theme. If if we build, listen, resilient kids become resilient adults and non-resilient kids become non-resilient adults. Um, and at the end of the day, we're trying to build like strength of character and having foresight and be able to bounce back from your setbacks. Um, what do you say to parents who don't encourage their kids to play sports? Um, you mentioned like it's a new math class. I feel like educational academic resilience is a little bit different yeah do you agree with that or do you think it's the same i totally agree but see you have to develop that from a young age on a mindset like trying to take a positive perspective on situations you know it's easy to say it's half full or half empty but if you start the kids off as being positive in the very beginning i think it just kind of carries over and then every challenge you have you look at it as a learning opportunity and you teach your kids from the jump street Excuse me, <clears throat> that every time something happens and you can learn from it, it makes you a better person. And then I think also, you know, you, you, you have to kind of control emotions. You know, some people get, go crazy when something happens. But if you start to think about what's a, what's forward and what's not backward, they used to say only only think backward to gain strength to go forward. And then I think, on uh, you know, you have to my mom always used to tell me that you need to focus on things that you can control when something mm -hmm. happens and you don't play sports i think you have to think about what you can do about it and what you can do about it because there's certain things that are wasting your energy and time and you got to be able to figure that out and i think that's all probably part of the resilient people are supposed to supposed to possess i do think all of what you just said is like you have to build that muscle yep or you have to be raised around that muscle. Like you have to be raised in an environment where people just don't quit. Like they don't take no for an answer. Um, but I, uh, I, I don't know. I know a lot of adults that have trouble bouncing back in their own life. So how do you trickle that down to your kids? Like if you're not being a role model for yourself? It's like doing what I say and not what I do. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. That, Ignore me, think, just do what I'm telling you to do. So, well, you you know yourself that the best way is through positive reinforcement. But if you are not, not really a good example, you got to preach it. You got to preach about never giving up, about trying to always give your, 
your best. Make it a habit to do your best. Uh, all those things, because more positive reinforcement that you have, especially for young kids. And and I've learned in my little uh, training stuff that they, they judge a lot of stuff by the time a kid goes to third grade. As a matter of fact, uh, in Texas, I just learned that uh, if a kid is not reading at a certain level by third, third grade, they build a new prison. And that blows me away because oh, that man. means you're not giving an effort on it. And that's true for Texas. They lead a nation in prisons. And that's for me, that's a negative because I grew up there. But I still think that you can, you know, you should never give up on any kid. Even if a kid's mm-hmm. going to fifth grade and you read, there's still ways to help them do that. We got more technology up for us now than ever before. So I think the thing you have to do it, and if you're not a good parent and you're not a, you don't want them to play sports, you got to be a, have a reinforcement that uh, that is able to mold kids how they are. I have a little son who I have molded, and I see him doing exactly what I wanted him to do. I want him to be polite to people. I want him to open the door for ladies. His, his grandmother is is close to eighty years old, and he. He takes care of her by opening the door, carrying things for her. And he's it's become a habit for him. And I think he's most resilient when he gets around people because he shows his manners. I have enough of those. Mm-hmm. That's been your thing forever. You, I remember yes. you came to Jersey. You're like, I don't know about Jersey folks. They don't say good morning. And they like, don't well, say good night either. <laughs> there's more to Jersey to, than good morning. We got Taylor ham and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Um, (laughs) let me ask you a question, Billy. Let's move from kids to talking about adults. Um, what you rattled off a bunch, which I think are useful, but let's, I'm just curious, like, what are the three to five things that helped you build your own resilience throughout your life? And I know you've been through some stuff and you've been through, uh, you know, team changes, you've been through career changes, what do you think you learned from being an athlete from a young age all the way through being a professional, you know, NFL player? Like, what are three to five things that you've learned that have you carried into adulthood that you think other people can benefit from? That's a great question. Uh, but as I look at it and just right off the top of my head, I look at people who have patience. Not a lot of people have patience. And I think that I have outstanding patience. Sometimes I, you know, I get a little frustrated, like when I couldn't get my equipment together today or whatever. But most of the time, patience allows you to to see things clearly. And the second thing is be, be responsible for what you do. You know, resilience is being responsible, making the right decision, making the right, the correct uh, wordage of things. And see, I think that being responsible, it shows a lot. It shows examples of what people can do. And I think also uh, problem solving, because when things happen, how do you look at it? How do you make it better? How do you get mm-hmm. out of the situation to, to give yourself an opportunity to do it again? Uh, and, mm-hmm. and I really believe in problem. And then self-awareness. You know, be aware of everything around you, of how you're, you're acting, how you talk, how you dress, how you, you present yourself to people. And I think those things allow you to, to for, and especially from my point, to be resilient in everything that you do. I mean, resiliency, if you think about it, it's about everything. Everything you do, you know, mm-hmm. about how you up in the morning, how you are responsible for your uh, your your job situations, are you responsible for other people? Are you flexible when things go right? Do you are you able to make a an exception? Uh, what I lo- learned in football was that if somebody's beating you, then make a change. You know, do something different. Don't continue to accept somebody beating you. Do something about it. And I think that's resiliency. Mm. Well said. Mm. I'm wondering mm. um, <laughs> what – now, this is a tough one because it's off the top of your head. What was one of the greatest challenges you faced in your life, whatever you want, but professionally, as a, you know, as an athlete, as a parent, like whatever? What did you well, draw um, on to get through it? What did you draw on to get through it? And And, like, help us learn some lessons here. Well, uh, mine's a pretty simple one. I, I had a couple. One was uh, my 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 dad was in the army, and we traveled a lot. And we came from Seattle, Washington, to San Antonio, Texas, where he retired. I didn't realize it, but in Texas, they're big ball. I didn't know it then. And they uh, so I I practiced like everybody else, and and the guy wouldn't let me 
play because he said, I wasn't there before practicing, so why should I get ahead of everybody else? And that kind of made me mad. So what I did was I did everything I'd read about and I talked about was I stayed after practice to work on my game. I came early, stayed late, and did all those things. And then when I went to my, my dad because I didn't play, it says, just make sure you hang in there because you don't want to get any bad habits. And I was so happy that I had the resiliency to hang in there that it allowed me to flourish because I knew I could draw back on that. You know, mm-hmm. when things happen in your life, how do you reflect on what you can do to make it better? And now those situations come up and I don't even have a speed bump on them. And the other one was was a little different. Um, I didn't do well in school. I think when I was probably in grade school and we were playing a championship game and my mother took me out of the game because she wanted to prove that the school is more important than the sports. And she said, you, you can make them better, I go hand in hand. And and I, I was so upset at my mom. I mean, I I probably, you know, talked every kind of language I could talk to her, but it, it didn't sway <laughs> her. But the thing it did was that it, it made me make my grit better. And I never had a situation, uh, and that was probably, I'm going to think, in the fourth grade Little League. And I never had a situation then where my grades were involved because when you go to college, yeah, if you don't maintain a, a certain grade point, they kick you off whether your mom and dad is there or not. So yeah. it allowed me to to uh, get to that point and realize what's ahead and what's at stake and that, you know, you got to be able to balance your life. You know, Billy, you bring up a couple of many good things, but one thing is putting, being able to put bumpers on ourselves. So your mom like pulled you out of the game because your grades weren't there. And I'm sure that was embarrassing. Your dad was like, listen, do what you got to (laughs) do. I guess at some point, whether you're a kid or an adult, you have to learn how to put bumpers on your life, right? And those bump just like at the bowling alley, they put those things in the lane so your ball can't go in the lane. <laughs> yep. I think it's good practice to maybe develop a couple of bumpers by which you live your life or w- through the lens which you see your life. Well, Would you my agree? favorite like, what one. What are some of those bumpers? Do you think? That- mm-hmm. my, my favorite one is something that I've been using for a long time. Is uh, I said the way you think controls the way you act, and sometimes you have to curve your thinking to think in a more positive way and get away from the negative stuff sometimes that you see on TV. So if you're thinking about it, your attitude controls your effort. And I learned that. I've made that a way of life probably ever since the, the ninth grade because I was a little negative or something. And then my dad talked to me about, you know, there's a difference between negativity and positivity. And if you start out with positivity, you know, you can always, you know, go make it even better. But sometimes if you, if you go negative, then everything after that is negative. So, I think my attitude and the way that I learn to think about things controls the way that I do things around people. And I think that I need to kind of, you know, make sure that I'm positive and show positivity and and, and try to bring people in rather than uh, push them out. Love it. So I'm going to recap. I'm going to, I'm going to give all your brilliance right now, back in a, a quick recap, because you know what? I always want it to, um, have a show that people can leave at the end and take some actionable tools with them to go back into their life. So here's a couple of things that you said, which I thought were awesome and feel free to jump in and clarify. Um, The first thing you said is patience, which I think is an incredible skill, one that I am still working on. Uh, (laughs) But being patient, you said, allows you to see clearly. And I think, you know, one thing I've appreciated about you for all of these decades of, of knowing you is that you are a voice of reason because you're very patient in surveying the situation and getting all the inputs that you need before you make a decision. Um, I think that's a big one. Uh, You said, be responsible for what you do. And I would also say, be responsible for what you can control, right? So I think a lot of the reasons why people flip out, Billy, is because they're fighting things that are completely outside of their control. Absolutely. Which is frustrating, uh, frustrating and aggravating. Um, You mentioned problem solving, developing problem solving skills, um, having self-awareness. And I loved what you said. You essentially said, like, be aware of how you show up in the world, what you wear, how you talk, who you interact with. I think that is a big thing. And the last thing you just mentioned was remembering that your attitude controls your effort. Um, I think those are all fantastic seeds of wisdom did you want to add any more in there 
I, I mean, I don't care. Athlete, not an athlete. Those are all like really good life lessons. I probably could go on another hour, but I just like <laughs> my my father was instrumental in probably my attitude because he always made people feel good about themselves. You know, when people greet you for the first time, and especially like I'm a I'm over six feet and two hundred pounds, and sometimes I don't want to be intimidating to people. So he what he used to do is make people feel good about themselves before he told them about himself. And that makes people let their hair down. It, 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 it's almost like you're welcoming somebody into your house, but you're welcome into to you into your thought process. And I th- I like that that way of thinking because you know some people wait till other people try to bring their hair down. But you, when you meet somebody the first time, and you do it yourself, I've seen you do it where you know you greet people and make them feel good. And I think if everybody did that, we, we would have a different world. Mm, I agree. You know, all right, we're like running out of time when I have you on again. But, you know, I wonder all of these uh, terrible crises that are happening in the world. If somebody had just said good morning to somebody or how's your day going or giving them a smile, might that have been enough to, you know, throw them off course in terms of whatever dastardly deed they were doing? Well, what's really interesting, and I'll say this very quickly, is uh, you mentioned in the beginning that I work for athletes up in athletes. <laughs> and what they do is we go around and teach kids how to make presentations. But what I have learned is that if you're not an athlete, if you're not a cool kid, you're not a cheerleader, you're just a kid that goes to school. Sometimes, and every school has this, where a kid is going around with their books in their hands and nobody says no to them. No friends are reaching out to them. So what I ask the athletes to do, if they see that, I'm not asking them to take them to dinner, take them to lunch. Just reach out and say hello, just like you just did just say hello how's your day and that mm-hmm. will make someone's day and make and probably help somebody from doing something that could be worse because they have no one else around them i mean i've only noticed it since i've started doing this but there a lot of schools where the kids who don't get involved in stuff and we talked about mm-hmm. you know some kids don't play sports or don't get involved in mm-hmm. stuff and they're loners and just reach out to other yeah. kids in your school and say hello yeah that's a good point by the way they're are they lone alert? Are they loners or are they lonely? There's a big difference. I think they're lonely uh, think- because they, you know, they're carrying their books in their hands and they never have a, somebody with with them. You know, they yeah. don't reach out to people. They don't talk to people, and and people don't reach out to them because they're not quote unquote popular kids. Yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing this work with you because I do think we can go into schools and teach this idea about resilience to kids that may or may not have guidance. Um, but Billy, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I know you have a sports podcast. Do you know? Look, I'm putting you on the spot. Do you know where we could listen to it? Yeah, we're on uh, YouTube and uh, uh, the, the, what's the radio station that's on your Sirius Radio? We're on Sirius Radio. I'm, I'm with the guy named Charles Way. Charles Way played fullback for the Giants, but now he's the director of player personnel, and we do this. Uh, I don't know when when it when it's on YouTube or, or Sirius Radio because I don't have Sirius Radio, but I've seen it on YouTube every okay. week. All right, awesome. So I'll tell you what: when we're done, oh, we will um, we'll post a link when we post the replay, so that okay. we can all listen in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. It's my pleasure. Thank you, and uh, in, and let me know when you're uh, you're um, going to send out food or something, you know. It's already on your front step. I did uh, Uber Eats. It's on your front doorstep. <laughs> that was that was <laughs> some good. Some ribs, some mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for joining in to Tammy Talks. We're looking forward to another great conversation next week with uh, actor, motivational speaker Ed Blunt. Have a great week, Billy. I'll talk to you soon.
part of this is expressly prohibited unless Affinity Global LLC has explicitly granted its prior written consent, all other rights reserved.